Welcome back to another episode of Aboard the Guiding Light, everyone. My name's Shane McClellan. I'm your captain and host. I'm standing here in front of a memorial built in 1891 to commemorate the 400th anniversary of Christopher Columbus setting foot in the New World. This was built by the Chicago Herald here on San Salvador, which is recognized as the first landing site of Christopher Columbus made in the New World. There are numerous monuments commemorating this sailing feat. This one was erected on the windward side of the island. In 1992, these two were built where archaeologists think he set foot for the first time near a native settlement. There is even a monument 40 feet below the surface where they think he dropped his anchor. Due to the significance of this island, the Olympic torch journeyed here on its way to the Mexican Games. I rode my bicycle around the island and started right in town where I was one of only two to three boats anchored. My first stop was at the south end of the island to visit Waitland's Castle. Folklore states that this was the tree erected by pirate John Waitland in 1680 and has a view to the east and west on the southern part of the island. As romantic as this tale is, the reality is it was simply a plantation house built a hundred years later in history. I did find this natural cellar interesting, though. At the north end of the island, Dixon Hill Lighthouse was built in 1856, and the light is visible for 19 miles. It is hand-operated, stands 163 feet above the water, and gives a double flash every 25 seconds. It is one of only four kerosene lighthouses left in the Bahamas and one of ten in the world. Our next stop is Rum Key, 20 miles to the southwest. The island got its name due to a shipwreck carrying rum which washed up on shore. Another ship that was wrecked on the reef is the 101 gun man of war HMS Conqueror which went down in 1861 and is still visible in 30 feet of water. If we travel to the northwest corner of the island, we will find the beautiful but open Flamingo Bay. As long as you watch out for the numerous coral heads, you can navigate without a problem. This is a great place to dinghy or kayak several miles across the north of the island to Hartford Cave. Here you will find a treasure trove of Lycaon petroglyphs or rock carvings. Besides enjoying these historic sites, you should meet and talk with the laid-back people living in Port Nelson. A mere eight miles to the northwest is Conception Island. This uninhabited gem of an island is riddled with salt creeks and is a great spot to take the dinghy or kayak exploring. The entire island is only three by two miles and is part of the Bahamas National Trust. While you are exploring the salt creeks, watch for turtles because this is a nesting ground for them, but they are a bit shy. Although the creeks are fascinating, don't forget to dive the many reefs around the island also. Our last three stops are the most remote and least visited islands in the Bahamas. First is Samaya Key with its wonderful yet dangerous reefs. Here you will find Hunta, the only indigenous mammal to the Bahamas. It was thought to be extinct up until the 1960s. Next is Great Inigua Island, where Morton Salt has a huge facility. Last is Mayaguana, where Abrams Bay is a great place to snorkel the amazing reef protecting the bay and also rest before heading to the site of our next video. Turks and Caicos. Until then, this is your captain and host telling you to have fair winds and following seas.